We've been asking you all week to send us your workplace ethics questions, and we would give you a response, but boy, you sure sent in a lot of those questions, and we are excited about it. Professor at Emerson College and syndicated columnist for the New York Times, Jeffrey Seglin, is with us today, and he is going to answer some of those. How are you today? Good. Good. Great to have you in. I think the workplace ethics questions are great ones because I think things come up pretty frequently at work, and you're not exactly sure how to handle it. Yeah, and it's also when things are intense economically, people tend to look for issues. You're so absolutely right. So let's get started with our very first question that was sent in by some of our viewers. The first one is this. What about romances at the workplace? There are romances at the workplace. <laughs> um, what, one of the, the, about whether it's ethical or not, there's absolutely right. nothing unethical about romances in the workplace. It's where most of us spend most of our time. The challenge is, is that people need to talk about it and there need to be some kind of uh, um, parameters set around okay. how they work. You don't want a, a workplace dictating what your romance should be, but if you fall in love with your boss or someone who supervises you, that presents a problem, not just right. for other people in the company, but also because what happens if the relationship doesn't work out and there needs to t be somebody who takes responsibility and typically it needs to be the person who has more power in that situation. So the supervisor needs to let human resources or other people in the company know what's going on, but it would be nuts to say that people can't fall in love in the workplace. Yeah, it seems to me if it's a coworker, it's one thing, but when it's a when it's a supervisor, yeah. it makes it a yeah. very difficult yeah. or, situation. And coworkers who get elevated to then be supervisors, sure. it, it makes it. All right, question number two. Is it okay to embellish your resume or lie on your resume? No. <laughs> seems like a pretty easy it, answer. It is, huh? and, and you know, one of the things people think about, they start fudging on questions like that, so they think, um, that they'll leave things off right. and they'll make things look like things they aren't. So, and employers, prospective employers can see this where people will list a, a college name as attending a college but won't put the degree name and they think if I don't put the, the earned degree there then it's okay. Sure. But you're, you're, you're misleading the people so the best thing to do is, is not ever mislead people, not embellish at all. You know this isn't one of the questions that we included but another question that one of the viewers asked is do you have to put on there if you've had some kind of simple minor arrest? Well you see that's a different kind of question. You don't have to put that on your resume but, but if you at some jobs require a job application and they ask that question about arrests and if you don't put it on there that's a big mistake because it's so easy to check Mm -hmm. that stuff, especially if you're in the human services and they do a Cori check and sure. check a background. If one, Once they find out that you've not included that stuff, you either don't get the job or they'll fire you. Yeah. So it seems to me just don't lie. Well, just don't lie is good and there's high profile examples of how this has come back to haunt people. There was the president of the U.S. Olympic Committee who had, had right. put a degree she didn't get and 20 years after the fact um, it still came back. still came back to haunt her. Here's question number three. Is it okay not to reveal to a potential employer that you're pregnant? Yes, it's okay. Um, I, employers can't ask about that kind of thing. I think what's in that question um, is, the, is the idea of um, are you taking advantage, uh, advantage of an employer by doing that? And I don't think you are. Um, I think you're allowed to have a life. Um, but, I, but I think... Um, you know, just as you, you don't have to reveal any other medical condition unless the physical is required for certain jobs, um, you don't have to require that. Um, if you're going into a job with the idea that you're going to get pregnant, take leave and never go back, then you're deliberately misleading an employer and that sort of crosses the boundary of what's ethical and what's not. Some people take smoking breaks. Should non-smokers be allowed at that same time? Sure. I mean, I think I don't think they should be... A, you mean we should force them to smoke? Or, no. Uh, we, we, <laughs> no, I think you we, get a break. <laughs> they should. I mean, I think it's, it is a, a, a question of fairness, and a break is a break. It's, it's, they're not being given a cigarette break because it's an addiction. They're being given a break, and so I think people should be given a break, maybe not to leave the building because smokers in most companies will leave the building so they don't get the smoke in the air. Right. But sure, I think that uh, as a question of fairness, everybody should be allotted... A break. A break. Yeah. 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 We had so many questions, and I have so many more that I'd like to ask you, but unfortunately, we're running out of time. So if your question wasn't answered or you have another ethical question, you can contact Jeff. You can get him at his uh, website. It's jeffreyseglin.com. Okay. Pose those questions directly okay. to you. Okay. So good to see you. Yeah, it's good to Thank see you. Thank you for coming in. You're welcome. Have a great weekend. Meantime, we'll take a break, everybody. Have lots more still coming your way. Stay with us.